Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Mr. Haas, you're with Johnson & Johnson, is that right? Yes, sir. How is that stakeholder capitalism working out for you? How is it working for Johnson Johnson? It's one of the greatest honors of my life. Okay. Um, I, I, I see where you, Johnson & Johnson, has joined with um, a number of other good American companies, J.P. Morgan. Um, he's not a company. Mr. Colin, Ka Colin Kaepernick on his issue of police brutality. Procter & Gamble, Facebook, Apple, y'all pledged $50 billion to, quote, be a force for social change and fight injustice. $50 billion is a lot of money. How is that commitment consistent with what you're asking us to do here today? Sir, I'm not aware of the particular commitment you're uh, referencing, but I could it's say right dispositively. Internet, it's got to be right. I could say dispositively that the consistency is, in the end, to ensure that each and every act that the company takes is consistent with our credo. Okay. And our credo puts the public and our patients first. Right. Let me ask the professor uh, a few basic questions, because I'm still learning about this issue. Johnson & Johnson took it, oh, before I do, I forgot to ask you one question. How many talc cases have you tried to verdict? There have been 42 cases that have gone to verdict. Of those, we have prevailed in 32. Okay, so you've lost 10. Yes. Okay, and what were the total damages in the 10 that you lost? The damages ranged dramatically. Just give me a total. I don't know the total. I can give you a, a proxy. The highest one was in the billions. Okay. All right, Professor, um, I don't want to just pick on Johnson Johnson, but they're the one here. Let me pick on Georgia Pacific, okay? I don't, mean, I don't want to pick on anybody. I'm learning on this issue, but let's call them Corporation A gets sued in mass, with, with respect to uh, mass torts, they spin off the liabilities to a shell corporation, and that shell corporation files Chapter 11 bankruptcy, right? Sure. Is that legal under the bankruptcy code? Is that legal? Um, the code does not restrict that necessarily. Courts have found that there are, there are a variety of bases to reject that sort of action. So courts have been pretty active in this space. I should probably... Uh, what's White House what's left, the consensus? But, I mean, some bankruptcy judges say this is a legitimate use of the bankruptcy code, I presume. Other bankruptcy judges say, no, it's not, and, you, and it's dismissed. Is that a fair statement? Uh, that, that is a fair statement. I think that there's a nuance here. If you don't mind, what's I can flesh it out a little bit. What's the national consensus on this? I think the national consensus is if, that this is a proper action under state law, but to the extent there is some sort of impropriety, bankruptcy court judges are very well positioned to police that, as we've seen in the LTL case. So it's not that uh, Senator Whitehouse pointed out that I was supporting Texas Two-Step. I'm not supporting Texas Two-Step. I'm merely providing that. So to the extent there is malfeasance, the it can be addressed. To say, this is an abuse of the code, right? Exactly. And courts many, can address that. How many that. have done that? Uh, well, the most prominent one is, is LTL. So in the Third Circuit, now there's a very rigorous test. Is there a test. split among the circuits? There is. There is. So the Fourth Circuit, and we were talking about form shopping earlier, that would encourage form shopping. Absolutely. Okay. Um, is there a case before the Supreme Court to resolve this? Uh, no. I bet there's one coming. <laughs> I mean, and what, what, are you, what are you asking us to do today? The, the, let me start with Mr. Haas again. What are you asking us to do today? The ask from our perspective to Congress would be to make uniform that very issue you just identified. Whether, what is the standard with respect to dismissing a case? Now, there's a distinction between the propriety of a Texas two-step, let's call that. It's a divisional merger statute. 
and the question of what is a standard that you apply when you dismiss a case. Our case was not dismissed because of anything to do with the Texas two-step. Nobody challenged the Texas two-step in our case. In fact, Mr. It's Hoss, you just had a golden opportunity to answer my question. Uh, let me ask you, Mr. Perry, and you didn't do it. Um, Professor, tell me what you think we should do today. Uh, in what you think Congress would do. I think the, 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 there are very large issues here. I think, as I mentioned before, a 524, 524G needs to be amended to capture all mass tort cases. Once that's done, you can have uniformity in process and procedure with all these cases. Some involve asbestos, some don't. Um, the code can be uh, revised to uh, provide clarity on whether third-party releases can be part of a plan. I think that'd be very helpful. And of course, the feature claim is represented. If that could be modified, um, have some more integrity in that selection process, those pieces together, I think, would really improve the process. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Senator Kennedy asked a good question. We've tried to follow through on it as to just what were the verdicts or the settlements in these cases. We, some of it is hard to come by very quickly. But uh, there was one case in Missouri that was $4.69 million for a group of 20 claimants reduced on appeal to $2 billion, uh, to give you a range here. The, remember the offer from uh, Johnson & Johnson through LTL was for $8.9 billion for 60,000 claimants. Give, put that in perspective. Next up, I believe, is uh, Senator Hirono.